I'm Hugh Collingborn, Director of Technology with Sapphire Steel Software. In this video, I'll be guiding you through the creation of a simple project using Amethyst, our Visual Studio IDE for the Adobe Flash platform. You can download Amethyst from our website, www.sapphiresteel.com. Here I'll be using the December 2009 beta of Amethyst Professional, so bear in mind there may be some differences in later versions of the software. Right, let's get started. First, select File, New, Project. I'm going to be using the Flex 3 framework, so I'll select the Flex 3 application icon. If you like, you can edit the name of the project and select a location on disk. I'm going to use the defaults, so I just click OK. After a few moments, my project files appear in the Solution Explorer and an MXML file is loaded into the editor. An MXML file can contain both XML layout information, which defines the visual elements of the design, and ActionScript code between a pair of script tags. We'll auto-generate some code later, so for now I'm going to delete the default script section. Now, let's do some design. I can switch to the designer by clicking the Design button down here. First, I'll drop on a panel, which I drag out of the Amethyst Layout group in the toolbox. Then, I'll add a numeric stepper, and that's from the Controls section of the toolbox. Currently, the panel defaults to Vertical Alignment with Auto Layout, which is why it's moved the button to the top. I want the components to stay exactly where I put them, so I'll select the panel and change its layout property to Absolute in the Properties pane here. Now the control will stay just where I put it inside the panel. Let's also give the panel a caption. Making sure the panel is selected, I go back into the Properties pane and give it the title C to F Converter. And once I've done that, I'm ready to add some more components. So I'll drag and drop a label. And a button. And I can now use the mouse to move and resize them. And now I'll change a few properties. I'll change the button's label um, from the default, which just says button, to the more descriptive text, convert. And next I'll select the label. And once selected, I go back into the properties panel and set its text to 32F. And I'll also change its ID. That's the name that we use to refer to a component when we start writing code. Writing code. So I change its ID to F label for the Fahrenheit value. I'll also set a few properties for the numeric stepper. First, I'll change its ID to C stepper. This is where the centigrade uh, value will be displayed. And I'll make its maximum and minimum values 100 for the maximum and zero for the minimum. And I'll give it a step size of five. The step size is the amount by which it increments when its arrows are clicked. Now let's smarten up the design a bit. Notice that when I drag controls, these green alignment bars appear, showing which controls they line up with. And you'll see that the green alignment bars are slightly sticky, so that when I move a control, I can release the mouse button and get it to align just where I want it to be. If you don't like alignment bars, you can turn them off. You can also align to grid. Now, using the amethyst layout bar up here, I can set a grid size, turn the grid on, and turn grid snapping on. And I can change, you can see the, the control is snapping as I do. I can change the grid size by making a selection from here, and I can just turn it off again. We don't need it for now, so I'm going to turn off the grid and turn off snapping. There are a whole load of other functions in the Amethyst layout bar up here that are useful if you want to align controls or make them the same size. That's when you've got a group of controls selected and you want them all to be aligned to top, bottom, left, right, or resized width and height and so on. Now it's time to do some coding. 
You can either select events in the events panel and then enter a method name and double click or to create a default event handler you can just double click the button and in the design itself and that's what I'm going to do here. So when I double click it this creates an empty method and all I have to do now is to write some code. Okay so I'm going to start writing the code to take the Fahrenheit value and convert it into uh, sorry, the centigrade value and convert it into Fahrenheit. So inside the method I start typing away and as soon as I start typing you see that the IntelliSense system goes into operation and that lets me select keywords, methods and identifiers from these drop-down lists. So here I go C equals C stepper dot value uh, C stepper is our numeric stepper and just a simple calculation to convert the centigrade value into Fahrenheit and then display the result in the text of the label. Now as I've been doing this I notice that my code formatting is a bit inconsistent. You can see it's not nicely indented, the um, bracket is, is not properly aligned and so on. So I can fix that using the automatic code formatter in Amethyst and to do that the default keystrokes are Control e followed by D and you can see immediately the code reformats. You can also select Format Document from the Edit Advanced menu if you wish. And now I'm ready to run or debug my program. So I just press Control F5 to start without debugging and here it is a few moments later. Up pops my application in a browser and I'm ready to test it out. But I'm looking at it now and I can see the layout is not as neat as I wanted it to be. So I can go right back into Amethyst now and carry on working on the design by aligning and sizing the controls and adjusting the properties and so on. And as I'm doing this, notice that the designer shows me a live view of the controls so I can see the runtime appearance of my application in the designer itself as I'm working on it. So that's just a very brief introduction to Amethyst and you can find a great deal more information about Amethyst and how to use it on the Sapphire Steel website at www.sapphiresteel.com.